Morning, River Bend. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, I have a lot of things to be thankful for today, and I'm particularly thankful for the talented musicians on this stage this morning. You are going to be blessed without a doubt. I'm also thankful that you're here. I'm thankful for sure for the folks who are joining us online all across the country, even around the world, but I'm very thankful that you have taken the time to be together in this room today. It's an act of generosity. It's an act of grace. Perhaps you saw the, the garbage bags that are lining the halls if you came in off the plaza. Those are not garbage bags. Those are bags filled with hundreds and hundreds of toys that many of you have sponsored for over 4,000 children all across the Austin area, children at risk and in need for Christmas. You are providing that to them through our Angels of Foot program, and I'm thankful for your generosity. I'm also especially thankful for the message that we are going to hear today. It is a narrative that was created by three very talented Austin musicians, Susanna Schaffel, Casey McPherson, and Brandon Kinder. And they wrote these songs to take us on a journey and it's a breathtakingly honest journey. It's a journey that is authentic and uh, invites us to come to a place from, from a place of, of struggle, from, from a place of dissatisfaction, and to climb with them to a place of hope, to a place of peace. And it's a difficult climb, no doubt. It is a difficult climb, but the view from the place where we will go today is a view of grace. It is a view of what it means to love and to be loved. It's a view that is at the heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. And it is a view that hopefully, when we arrive, we will see that we are enough. We are climbing and journeying to find our way home and I want to say this morning, on this Thanksgiving week, welcome home.
I want the car that drives itself I bought a timeshare home in Taos But it's not as nice as yours My kids are dressed like magazines Sometimes I just hope no one thinks I'm weak so I work out four to five days a week, but my body's not near as nice as yours. Sniff the deep, I can't give it up. I need more than you, but it's not enough. Sniff the deep, I've got all
this were about you and all the times I've tried to close my eyes and talk to you now I close my eyes in spite of you but this isn't about you not everything is about I finally get around to say what's on my mind. I'd say, Where did you go? I'd say, Why did you leave? Oh, I'm out here trying to catch the wind, but oh. I want more. I want better. That's what she told herself. She was trained. You see, she was brought up to believe that she could be anything. She could do anything. If she worked hard enough, if she put her mind to it, she could accomplish anything achieve her dreams. And this worked well for her. She saw the fruit of this, her ambition, her drive, her determination. 
She built a great life. She collected uh, a network of great friends, had an impressive resume. And if you saw her, you would look at her and, and you would say, she has it all. She has it all figured out. She, she has enough. No, she doesn't just have enough. She has more than enough. But beneath the surface, in the private moments when she looked at herself in the mirror, she didn't think she was enough. You see, that uh, competitive, that, that drive that, that moved her forward, that, am, that ambition that, that, that motivated her, betrayed her. Because it wound up victimizing her with comparison. Because when she got where she was going, she found that there were people who were beyond her. There were people that were better than her. There were others who were smarter who were prettier, who were thinner, who were younger, who were more successful, who were more popular. And in the clutches of that comparison, she, she, she believed that she wasn't enough, that she wasn't smart enough, and she wasn't pretty enough, and she wasn't strong enough, and she wasn't brave enough, and she didn't work hard enough. And eventually, in that uh, language of, of uh, self-criticism, the language that is filled with irony when you say, oh yeah, that was good enough, or that was just enough, or the pursuit not of enough, but more than enough, in that she blamed herself. She blamed herself for, for not being the person that was the best, that did not measure up, that was not enough. And she blamed, she blamed the people around her. She blamed, she blamed the world for its injustice, for its unfairness. And ultimately, she blamed God. Where were you when I needed you? Where were you when I, when I felt hollow? And in her pursuit of more than enough, she wound up with more than enough. More than enough disappointment. More than, en than enough discouragement. More than enough shame. And in her pursuit, she wound up in a place where she felt completely alone. She wasn't alone, you see. I was with her. We were with her. It's a thing we all feel in that pursuit, in that, in that chasing after more. The feelings of blame and shame common to all of us. I know what it is to put up a good front, to appear to be self-sufficient, to have it all together. I, I understand that, but I also understand what it is for that to be hollow. I understand how hard it is to, to look at life and say, you know what, this is enough. This is enough. I am enough. It's hard, it's hard to believe. It's hard to accept the idea that I'm more than the sum of my parts. That I'm, I'm valued just because I am. That I'm worth loving. It's hard to see myself as a child of God. 
not valuable because of what I have or what I've done or what I've accumulated, but because of whose I am. That I am enough. That I am worth loving. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There's no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing, not even the worst sins listed in Scripture. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing Nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. It's a hard promise to believe that we are loved, not for what we do, not for what we accomplish, not for what we possess, but simply because we are. Because we are children of God. Not for what we are, but whose we are. We're children of a God, and God is love. It's a love that we were born with. And that makes us enough.
step I took into the unknown was a lost cause for a lost cause was I lost or just unfound cause I can feel something running through my veins or is it a winter wind upon my face but I know We know it when we see it. We know it when we feel it. We have a sense of it in our DNA, in our bones. It's the cry of our heart. It's a longing for home. And we know that there has to be a better way. A better way than bouncing off each other all the time and going from, going from struggle to struggle. There, there, has to, there has to be a better way to get there. There has to be a better way to find it. Because we believe it. We long for it. It's a place that's safe. It's a place in a place of promise, a place of grace, 
where, where, the, where the pain of the past has, has a purpose, where the struggles of our journey make sense. It's not all chaos, confusion. Where we're not trapped in our past and tangled up with the anxiety of our future. It's a place that feels like home But it feels too far. It feels, it feels, the climb feels too hard. The path, the path seems too rough. Because, because, because I'm not enough to get there on my own. I'm not strong enough. I'm not courageous enough. I'm not faithful enough. I'm, I'm not committed enough. I don't have enough. I'm not enough. And so, even though I know it's there, and I, and I want to be there, it exceeds my grasp. But you know what's true? We're already there. We're all, we've already arrived. Because it's not a place, it's not a physical place that we have to get to. It is, it is the breaking of the attachments of the pain of our past and the anxiety about our future. It's, it's, it's now. It's this place. We are already home. We are already there. We have already arrived. We are already in that place of promise, that place of hope, that place of grace. It's the place where we rest after the climb. It's a place where we come in from the cold. It's a place of acceptance. It's a place of peace. It's a place of thanksgiving. It's a place we know is home. It is what we are fashioned for. The journey is hard, and the climb is rough. But we're already there. We have already arrived. You see, God is love. When we take up permanent residence in a life of love, we live in God, and God lives in us. This way, love has the run of the house, becomes at home and mature in us so that we're free from worry. There is no room in love for fear. Well-formed love banishes fear. To love and to be loved. See, first we were loved, now we love because he loved us first. We live where love lives, where we are enough in the house of God forever.
Thank you. Welcome home, Riverbend. Thank you, Susanna, Brandon, Casey, choir, all of our musicians, the talented people here. Thank you for reinvigorating our hope, for reminding us of grace, and for most of all, showing us that we are enough. You're home. Have a great Thanksgiving. Go in peace. <laughs>